will uh, have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll take your three minutes, and then I'll donate one minute to my treasurer. So quickly, uh, Dr. Duff, you talked about the front line. Now, my have been the back line since this country began. And now, since we're talking about universal health coverage, we know how preventive nutrition stands. Now, as we speak, nutrition is not funded by the government. The nutrition department relies on donor funding this country. It's not covered by the ministry. Two, when we talk about internship, nutritionists go for one full year internship without any penny. No pay, no single shilling, no medical cover, no risk allowance. And we have a court ruling that was done in Mombasa 2019. SRC was enjoined in this court. And SRC classified nutritionists as non skilled professions. We try to wonder how this is a non skilled profession who protects in nutrition of a critical care patient. So, which would request that SRC also sheds light on why it classifies nutritionists who go to school for four years, go for internship one year, is an unskilled worker that is classified under the catering and kitchen of the hospital. In 2019, during the COVID pandemic, these interns, 300 of them from the country, were on unpaid terms. When the time they at one point they stopped serving, then the team that was in Mombasa was suspended by the licensing body, that is Kenya Nutrition and Dietitian Institute for three months. As we speak, we have a group that sued the Minister of Health and the Public Service Commission for their internship and they were awarded 457 million up to date the doors of the ministry of health are closed and nobody wants to talk about that in terms of that payment so we wish to bring to attention that this internship under the ministry of health be run by the specific departments in those ministries so that it's coordinated rather than licensing bodies sending these people to suffering now as we speak with more than 600 interns sent out this year by Kenya Institute of Kenya Nutrition and Nutrition Institute to various level four to level six facilities with no pay as we speak. Now, when we come to employment, we would get advertisement. We have around 15 who are employed under UHC, the whole country. But against the total trend of around 15,000 who are currently out in the field, who majorly either they are under USAID, when USAID pulled sponsorship to some certain parts of the country, these people were jobless, up to date. We're talking about universal health coverage with which primary health care is the most important part of that. And we have possible to, to invest in preventive health, which is not the case. As we speak also as a country, only 1,200 nutritionists are employed, serving a population of 50 million plus. Thank you, Chair. I donate my one minute to the Chair. If I donate. Could it be the reason why we are having so many lifestyle diseases? Because uh, our nutrition is not well advised. Well, we shall debate. And probably SRC, uh, Chair, he has raised the matter of skilled and non skilled in your course of uh, submission, uh, just to educate me on the definition of skilled and non skilled workers. Thank you, Chair. Treasurer. Uh, thank you, Chair, for the opportunity. Sorry for earlier interruptions. Huh? So, um, as my colleague has emphasized, nutri our interns remain unpaid till date. And apart from that, the government is letting Kenyans down because, as you see, our population is growing, but we're also having a lot of, as you've talked about, non communicable. And COVID 
proved the importance of nutrition in health facilities and in healthcare. And I also want to point out that uh, in the next seven years, Kenya is projecting to spend an estimate of around 101.7 billion shillings on non-communicable diseases only. And this figure, of course, will go high if we add in the communicable diseases that can be prevented with adequate nutrition care. And we have, we have trained um, professionals all over the country. As, as my colleague has talked about, uh, through the Kenya Di Dietitian Institute, we also have internship to ensure that these professionals are not just book smart, but they are as well conversant with what is happening on the ground in the healthcare systems. So it will be wise for, for you to consider actually uh, increasing investment in nutrition. And um, we also request, we, are, we, we requested for a directorate from the Ministry of Health. I understand that they are not here and we are still yet to get that. We have also uh, brought about a petition on SRC on classification of nutritionists as semi-skilled because we are not semi-skilled. We undergo training and uh, we undergo also the required internships. And unfortunately, these internships are unpaid. So maybe you can consider having that put in place because it will not only save Kenyans' lives, but it will also save us money. Because in, an, in every dollar that you invest in proper nutrition, you'll get a return of up to 10 plus folds. That is roughly 16. If you, if you invest $1 in, according to the WHO's report, eh, if you invest $1 in nutrition that is preventive and curative medicine that uh, targets nutrition care, you're actually going to save up to $16. Of, and that will save Kenyans good money. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I have had your submissions, but I'm just wondering. So, um, so what is the relationship between uh, nutritionists, mm -hmm. agricultural extension officers, mm -hmm. and the farmers? Uh, the, the, the agricultural educational farmers, the, the agricultural educational officers. They educate the farmers on what the nutritionists usually tell them on terms of, in terms of density. And that is also why in our petition we have also requested for a department in the agri-nutrition to ensure that we also have qualified nutritionists to advise these, instance, these officers so that when they go to the farmers, they are able to talk to them about the importance of uh, production, pro, pro, ensuring that there is production of denser meals to feed our Kenyan population. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you uh, health workers unions, don't you think we also have to think of uh, what do we do with uh, staff in departments of agriculture who are doing extension services, veterinary officers, and all these others? That is why. Who also need to be promoted, they also need to earn, and in one way or another, the disciplines are interdependent in terms of what they do. Yes. Anyway, thank you very much. So I think um, the last union you want to listen to is KMPDU. Do we have KMPDU? Oh, we have another union.